Okay, I'd like to call the order of the Lake Mill City Council meeting of November the 17th, 2015. Please rise and join me with, for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you would call the roll, please, Misty. Mr. Foster? Here. Mrs. Fritch? Here. Mr. Grundon? Here. Mr. Krakovich? Here. Mr. Shar? Here. Mr. Knippel? Here. And I'd just like to introduce um, our new member, Blaze Kips. I'm sorry. Knippel. Knippel. And he's, he represents the high school? Yes. Okay. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Okay, uh, corrections and or approval of the City Council minutes of November 3rd, 2015. They are a motion of acceptance. So moved. Discussion? Second? I'll second it. Any discussion or corrections? If not, Misty, please call the roll. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Grundon? Aye. Mr. Kirkovich? Abstain. Mm. Mr. Shar? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Moving on to correspondence, Mrs. Fritz? Yes, I, I have some. Um, I uh, received an email from one of our constituents, and the um, citizen wanted to get an answer to the question of with. TID 4, as we're doing work in TID 4, does the money for TID 4 come out of our taxes? And from my understanding, in talking with council, that it does not, it comes out of the TID fund. But I wondered if uh, Steve had anything he wanted to add to that. Uh, TIDs are the primary basic uh, only economic development tool that cities have and the way it functions is, is you designate a district and then any new increment in that district pays to the TID. All other monies go to the general fund like they always did. So if Greg's property is paying taxes, it's not going into the TID unless he runs a business in the TID or lives in the TID for some reason. No. No, he was just concerned about the monies that we're spending in the in TID for. Yeah. No. That so what happens is, is <clears throat> You have, let's say, a property that's worth $100,000. Those taxes still go to all the properties that it normally did. Now you put in a building that's now worth $500,000 over and above the $100,000. The taxes on that $500,000 goes into the TID. And then that money is then used to pay for improvements related to the improvement. So you might need new streets, new sidewalks, those types of things in order to support that business. But that business is really the only one that's paying the taxes. Uh, there's an argument that those taxes would have gone into the general fund and been available to the rest of the city. On the flip side is, is if you didn't have the TID, the business went to come. You went to have the new development. And <clears throat> so there's, there's all those key issues. And generally what's in relation is where the public improvements there that would have supported those businesses if the TID weren't there. And most of the time, in, in our cases, it's no. So. Mm -hmm. But it is not a coming out of taxes, generally. No. Right. And you're, you're going to find every city in Jefferson County, every city in the state of Wisconsin has a, at least one. Most of them have uh, much more. And a lot of them are, you know, when Dustin does his reports, you can ask. But we're not even close to the, the limit on TID. Um, assess value in the in a TID district you know, and a lot of cities are at or over the limit so they can't even discuss new tax increment districts so we've done very well with ours and and just recall that you know the TIDs are the, the long-range goal of a TID is to uh, is to bring jobs to the city um, and uh, increase employment so um, hopefully that'll work out eventually and it has already well if you know, the TID number four is probably um, the TID that generates the most interest. But if you look at what the intersection up there looked at looked like before and how we're reshaping it to what it will look like in the future, you wouldn't have been able to do that without TID. 
Right. There were there were hundreds of thousands of dollars into water, sewer, streets, um, environmental remediation, uh, storm sewer, those types of things that needed to be done in order to be able to support those types of businesses. And they, they improved the quality of life in the city of Lake Mills um, as, as much as any other business. Thank you. Steve? Um, had a number of questions for the Parks Department. Other than that, pretty quiet. Good. The same as Diane's. Yeah, I had the same question as Diane's, but that's, that's it. And I too, so. <coughs> uh, Close this correspondence. Um, questions and public comment. Misty, would you read that for me? The notice? Yes, please. Questions and public comment. The public is encouraged to address the council at this time regarding items on the agenda, unless the item is the subject of a public hearing. If your comments pertain to a public hearing, you are asked to hold your comments until the hearing. Public comment may also be made at this time on items that are not on the agenda. If you've registered with the city clerk before the meeting has been called to order. The state's open meeting law discourages action by the council on items not listed on the agenda. Please keep your comments limited to three minutes and state your name and address when starting your comments and fill out the sign-in sheet provided. Are there any questions for the council or comments? Please come to the podium. Please sign in and state your name and address. Terry Railing, 1016 Mulberry. A week ago Saturday, it was not funny. I came in to go to the hardware store in the afternoon. 45 minutes later, I get out of town. Main Street was so backed up, vehicles could not get off the interstate. We had the event again at Tyronina, and quite frankly, uh, it was disastrous for the city. For one person's activity to affect the entire city, I'm sorry, this is wrong. Um, I, I'm not against bicycling, running, or anything like that. I'm not kidding, folks. It took 45 minutes to get out of town. Parking, that is an ongoing situation. Every time we have an event out there, they are all over the place. I usually see the tent going up, so I begin putting my garbage cans in a driveway. My neighbors, they were parking when Templin's was next door to me. They were even parking on the lawn. They were towed away. Every time there's an event right next to me, there's parking tickets issued and so forth. I know of only one time that um, Daybreak was contacted and asked permission. I don't know about anything after that, but it really does. It, it makes for a real mess. When we have the bicycle rally, <laughs> even in the country, we have problems on Highway G. They not only go one direction, they go down Hope Lake Road, turn around, come back. Now they got two lanes. Sunday morning I come in, go to the car wash. You can't go to the car wash. What do you mean you can't go to the car wash? Well, the bicyclers are going through. Okay. Go to Century, come back. I want to go to the car wash. Well, the event's not over yet. I went to the car wash. Then I come out of the car wash, trying to th show their authority and so forth, wouldn't even let me back in the lane of traffic. Those little rubber things, they don't make a lot of noise and they go under. But you can't tell me that these people bring money into town. You show me where they carry a wallet. But it really was, folks, a week ago Saturday, it really was. There was people blowing horns and, and like I say, vehicles could not get off the interstate. And so I don't know what can be done there or, or what, but um, to have them routing through town and tying up town like it was, it wasn't a good situation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Please step forward. My name's Don Chapman, uh, we live at 308 North Ferry Drive. I applied for a liquor license and they wanted me to write something 
to you guys, but I just can't, I just figured I'd just show up here and just tell you that I applied for the liquor license and just trying to get a job over at Mobile over here. And I've, in my past, I've had some drunk driving tickets, but that's been down the road and everything. And just want, trying to get a job and the Mobile's trying to hold a job for me if I can get it or not. But uh, that's basically all I had to say. I don't know what else to say. But just taking consideration, you know, I've did some stupid things, but I've learned from it. And just uh, hopefully I can get this liquor license. Okay, that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Uh, I guess I've got a question. First of all, uh, this is not pertaining to Lake Mills City Council business. Uh, could you yield me three minutes? Uh, I'm Scott Mahalik. I'm running for the Wisconsin State Assembly. I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, I did have some things to say. It would take th three minutes. Uh, I hear a motion to. Can we do that, Vicki? You don't, you don't even need to yield. Spend the rules. You don't even need to yield. Three oh, minutes. Okay. He's got three minutes. You got three minutes for public Take all your time. Okay. If he wants to take five, then maybe. But. <laughs> okay. Thank you for yielding me those three minutes. My name's Scott Mahalik. I'm running for the Wisconsin's 38th Assembly District, which includes my hometown of Marshall, Deerfield, Cambridge, Lake Mills, Johnson Creek, and Economowoc. I'm running because I'm an everyday working man who works for $14 an hour. And I believe that common workers' voices are being trumped by big bags of money. I want to stop the degradation of Wisconsin educators in my home state. I'm running because they say people like me, an everyday working man who works for $14 an hour, who's a family man, can't. I've run once before in 2012 when I received 13,000 votes and 40% of the popular vote, including 1,700 votes right here in Lake Mills. I'm speaking before you tonight because I'm making a tour of the city hall meetings, village board meetings throughout the 38th district. I know that school districts and local municipal boards are the driving force of economic development. When a company wants to move to your town, they ask you for tax incentives, TIF district money, water, natural resources, road access, land, etc. I'm here to tell you tonight that I will never be in favor of any bill that takes away your local control or exercises budgetary caps for you. I'm here to tell you that I support, support raising shared revenue. This will help you meet your budgetary demands to keep money in your TIF districts. At a time when Oscar Mayer, Baumatic, Hamlin right here in Lake Mills, Quad Graphics, SC Johnson Wax are leaving the state, what are our state reps and, and state senator doing? They're passing a bill to get rid of the Government Accountability Board and double the campaign contribution limits to their own campaigns. At a time when Wisconsin is second in the nation in job <laughs> loss, we should be having an extraordinary session on how, how to create jobs, how to get people back to work. How do we do this? We invest in education, green jobs, renewables. We turn back to the clock to 1978 when Wisconsin tech schools were absolutely free. Doesn't it make a sense right now that when Hamlin uh, has 175 workers that are gonna be losing their jobs, that they be able to attend a tech school to get a new skill absolutely free? These are just a few of, of the things that I'm running on. My uh, website is www.mahalikforassembly.com. We also need to tear down regulations such as a law that does not allow microbreweries to distribute their own kegged and bottled beer, like Tyranina right here in Lake Mills. Finally, if we remodel our public waysides to put people back to work and pay for our transportation needs, instead of borrowing money for our transportation needs, I believe Wisconsin will be a better place to live. I appreciate your time. My door is always open, and I look forward to representing your community. The last thing I got to say is I want to thank everybody that lives in Lake Mills. I campaigned here in 2011, 2012. I've been door knocking here for about the last six weeks. And everybody on both sides of the aisle has just been outstanding. 
they're, I mean, they're friendly. And what I really like about your town is, you know, you guys got a lot of great local businesses. Um, gentlemen, if you've never been to Denny's Barbershop for a straight edge shave, you got to put it on your bucket list. I'm telling you. Uh, Waterhouse Bistro for a great cup of coffee and a sandwich. Uh, going to Tyronina for a cold one and listening to a band in the summertime. I mean, this, I mean, you've got it made here in Lake <coughs> And I want to thank you very much for yielding the time. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one else, we'll go ahead and close questions and public comment and move to the city manager's report. Steve? Um, I distributed the summary from Steve Grable about our session. Mm -hmm. um, so he was very complimentary of where we've been in the last year. And uh, the report looked good. Uh, last meeting, Mr. Grunin, you asked about a walkway between Bumper to Bumper and Shopco. We do have one, and I've asked uh, Dwayne and Paul to look into it, see what kind of conditions are there. Um, the library handicapped ramp, it is on the north side of the building, and originally that parking lot didn't cover the whole back, so the handicapped ramp is at the far east end. That the handicapped parking space is at the far east end of that back parking lot, and you you're supposed to go over and then take the concrete ramp up to the top. That area right there is supposed to be there's a there's a block of concrete in front of the door, and then the handicapped ramp comes up and lines up with it. That handicapped ramp has settled and created about a two to two and a half inch step. So we are looking into either mud jacking or grinding or tr pouring a new area there uh, so that we'll fix that handicapped ramp. That, that ramp is, it was a handicapped ramp, but this, the step was created by settling. Wasn't it? So when you said there was a step, I was like, <laughs> but uh, okay, it made sense now. Uh, dark store legislation. Um, our insurance man made mention of it it's um, Walgreens and CVS and Target and all those other stores that are filing on trying to hide under leases and get out of paying taxes um, <clears throat> they actually have some legislation going forward through that now I don't know if you stopped and read your uh, municipal league bulletin but it is important for you to contact your legislators on that issue uh, soon because uh, that's very important to us and um, every city in the state, actually. And we need to get that pushed through because um, that's, a, that's one that is stealing taxes from our people and uh, giving it to large corporations. And we need to make it fair. All set, you know, we go through and work really hard to make assessments as fair as possible, and then you get those cut out of you. Um, I already talked about the plan assessment report. You have a copy of that. I don't know. We may want to go through that at some work session or put it on an agenda and at least approve it, recognize that it came through and that we've worked on it. I also received a Highway 89 drainage question. Uh, there's some properties on the south side of the city where the street's relatively <coughs> high and the water is trapped along the edge. It actually sits on the sidewalks. And they were checking to see... Um, how the design would be down there. I've been working with the project manager, Vicky Romanesco. Um, the street will be lowered, but not as much as I had anticipated. Everything from the sidewalks in will drain into the street and drain through the drainage system off. The question is, is how much water gets trapped behind that sidewalk? because it looks to me like some of the sidewalks are a little high and will hold water in the front yards. And so I'm a little concerned about first floor flooding in some of those areas. So I, I've got Vicki working on that, and she's going to give me a report. Um, I provided the monthly budget report and the police department report. 
Um, the chief of police did a very nice presentation, a little long, but a nice presentation at Rotary today. So I want to thank him. Uh, he, they had a, an excellent week, um, recovered a stolen car and, and recovered a young lady on an Amber Alert. Uh, so I uh, want to thank them. Uh, Street Department has been really moving the leaves off and it uh, looks like we're going to have that water line done on, on the American Way here shortly. So any questions? I just want to compliment the Street Department on uh, getting that leak fixed by the, uh, the car wash on the south end. That was, uh, that was great. Got it paved and everything, so kudos to them. Any questions? I would like to have the councils on behalf of the council, the congratulations to our police department who was involved in that Amber Alert. It was like how Amber Alert is supposed to work. There was an event, there was a 911 call, there was an Amber Alert, and there was act quick action, uh, as it turned out, required by uh, our uh, city's police department, but it could have been any city's police department. A citizen uh, was involved in, in calling the police, and so it involved every entity that just like it's supposed to work. And so. Yep. That was great. Congratulations to the reaction by our police force and our citizens. Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Um, is there anything that we should be looking at in regard to Terry Railing's concern? I also got caught in that melee, and I was trying to figure out, too, what we can do and what. Is that our responsibility? Do we? Okay. So will that, could that one be pulled out of the automatic um, approval ones so that next year we can make sure we have a little better traffic flow and stuff like that? Diane, why don't you make that an agenda item? I think that would be an excellent okay. agenda item. All right, so I'll, write, I'll bring it up at the end of the meeting. It, it could be more than just, just uh, the, um, one event could be other events i know that for witches night out by main street downtown and again uh compliments to the police of uh, administrative uh and you steve in that you had police officers in the intersection uh moving traffic because in the beginning uh there was cars backing up you know like 15 deep and then the officer arrived and uh you know overruled the the four-way stop sign at Madison and Main Street and just moved the traffic through in a very uh, speedy way. Um, and so there's all the different events that go on that really can bottleneck our town's traffic patterns, especially with our state highway. We, we have hundreds of events that, that we go through and review and try and make a determination, you know, what kind of activities do we need to be, how do we need to be involved in the activity? Do we need to have police? Do we need to have garbage? bathrooms as, as you remember when when we first started regulating Tyron Needham Brewery in 2002 there was a whole list of things that were presented and the council thinned it out and, and worked with with Tyron Needham Brewery to determine so we went through and we had him provide letters from people saying yes that he could use our parking uh, we started doing the inspections on the tents and <clears throat> so we've been a lot more involved in all kinds of activities we discuss at our Tuesday morning meetings every week what's coming up this week, what do we need to do, uh, what are the issues, and then at the after the event we discuss, you know, what happened, what went wrong, what are we going to need to do next year to to look at this. And uh, Terry's hasn't been the first complaint I've received on it. Um, we have received other ones. We are already in the process of trying to figure out what we want to do for that. Um, that one is a tough issue so you know having it come to the city council won't bother me at all okay well we'll put that on the agenda and we'll, uh, we'll discuss it in depth um, okay anything else for Steve uh, let's go on to uh, counts I'm sorry acceptance of uh, committee minutes we have uh, the uh, minutes of the Public Works Board of October 13th, 2015. They'll go on, on record as read. Council business, we have uh, one ta uh, tavern operator's license, and that is? Lisa Gellitz. Uh, 
Uh, do I hear a motion of acceptance of uh, Ms. Gallix? So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Christy, could you call the vote, please? Mr. Grundin? Aye. Mr. Kirkovich? Aye. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Item D is a discussion and decision on the municipal agreement of uh, State Highway 89, or better known as Main Street South. Um, this is going, this motion will be um, the, uh, the catalyst to uh, sign into an agreement with the state on the Highway 89 project. And I think everybody has read the attachments to that. Um, Misty, could you read that motion, please? City Council Motion 15-11-2-1, authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement between the City of Lake Mills and the State of Wisconsin for the reconstruction of South Main Street. Be it moved by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, as follows. Section 1, that the agreement between the City of Lake Mills and the State of Wisconsin, a copy of which is attached hereto and made a part hereof, is hereby approved. Section 2, that the City Manager is authorized to execute said agreement and to take such actions as necessary to implement such agreement. The City Council does hereby approve the agreement and authorizes the Council President to sign the motion. And we have a motion of acceptance. So moved. And a second, please. Second. And discussion. So this is, this is the... Um, this is revision number one, is that correct? That's correct. And there were just a couple of changes on there. Um, maybe we just go over those um, first. Probably the largest set of changes was the cost estimates, and that had to do with the design decisions that we've made, um, the refining of the design um, discussions on, that we've been carrying on in public information meetings. Um, so it's, um, it also incorporates now that the street lights that we've added, um, the change in the annex area out here. Um, it does incorporate some concepts of how we were going to do the tree lawns, mm -hmm. um, which at the next meeting I'll have a proposal to change that. But these, they're already holding in holding that and it shouldn't have a, an economic cost to them at all. Um, there was more detail in it and so there was a, we sent back a request to add information on why we were responsible for any environmental contamination and any problems with access or damage to vehicles. And um, there he provided their response, uh, which was, is, this is a city street we pay you to be able to keep it to the standards of a state highway, but it's still your street. And so anything under it or that's occurring around it is your problem. Um, and that's their standard contract. Um, so we, we looked at it. Uh, we made some internal interpret uh, decisions that uh, there on North Main Street, we've already gone through all the environmental contamination from I shouldn't say North Main Street, it's South Main Street from Madison down to Lake. Anything from there south, uh, we have not found any environmental contamination that would be considered significant enough for us to worry about. Uh, so we didn't think that that would be an issue. The rest of it is, you know, if we were doing the project on our own, uh, we would have to do that. So we recommend that um, even with those conditions, they may seem a little bit extreme under the conditions that are explained in the contract. They, okay, they make sense. Okay, I have one question on reading reading the cost, or at least part of the cost breakdown. On the, um, I see that we were charged almost, uh, or I guess it's just a little over a quarter of a million for the um, on street parking. Is now is that for? the extra width of the road because of that. I see, okay, well that makes sense. Yeah, we pay for the on-street parking, which has been in the contract from the beginning. That's, sure. That's always a part of it. That's why when we evaluated it, um, we decided to go with one lane rather than two because the additional cost of the lane and the additional cost of the right-of-way acquisition. The street's currently a 66-foot <laughs> right-of-way most of the way. Um, in order to be able to get the 
two parking lanes in and the two bike lanes in and the five foot sidewalks we'd have had to push out to a minimum of 76 feet and and probably more our standard in our code for an arterial this size would be an 80 foot right away um, in this situation we didn't feel that was appropriate so we we've been trying to work with them to keep everything within the existing right away so so the bike lanes, that's fe <coughs> state or federal or <coughs> federal as far as requiring um well not requiring but the extra the extra um width required for the two bike lanes uh the the extra the bike lanes is required as part of the federal contract sure the the, the um sidewalks are ada you wouldn't have any option on that if you wanted to right. um, a certain t types of design features could be incorporated in that might change it a little bit but but technically for a street of this type uh, with two major schools on it having the five foot sidewalks is probably very appropriate for the handicapped um, this this has a lot of land use changes in it so you go from from uh, downtown commercial to and then you have some fringe line commercial on the south end and then a lot of residential so keeping it in the 66 foot right away in my opinion seemed the most appropriate and we really aren't looking for ultimately four lane roads which is why you do that we can everything we need there's not a, a significant amount of parking on the street on the south side so all the design concepts we'd worked through and discussed and, and and come to that decision that this was the best and we we remember we ran the survey sure and we felt that that uh, based on the information that we've been provided um, we wanted to go this route okay any, anybody got any questions for Steve on this I have a question on uh, based off our workshop tonight on insurance the the part on the hazardous material and the diverting of traffic uh, during construction and if hazardous materials moving through do we need to look at additional insurance for temporary on that no our insurance company would cover us on any of those types of issues the main one that I was concerned about was the insurance company may not pick up um, let's say there's gas contamination in the right-of-way we know that there's been some contamination down in the south end there are some uh, down by the town hall and Topol's down there there's there's some wells there's some level of contamination, but it's not significant like we see up at the north end at V and, and Main Street. Um, there, and you would see that, and, and that would, used to be that PECFA would pay for that. Um, PECFA isn't really in place anymore. And if there's any dollars available, which there historically hasn't been in the last five years, uh, maybe you could get some because it's been on the PECFA list before, but our anticipation is is if there's environmental contamination in that street anywhere along the line we'd have to pick that up in some form or fashion I don't know that our insurance company would pay for that I, I kind of doubt it that would be something we'd have to figure out how to pay for and another issue that that we I don't know that if you've been following you should have in the budget uh, there's money budgeted uh, every year until the end of the project for our engineering they bill us for the engineering we pay a pretty significant portion of the engineering all the way along so anytime I call them up and ask them a question about if we expanded the right away and we push the sidewalks back we could plant trees and we'd have more snow storage what do you think that would it then they have to go back and it costs us for that and the environmental survey and historic <coughs> survey and all that we pay a share of all that so the more expensive we make it so like if we had decided that the right away acquisition in the park was was not de minimis that it was significant and they had to go through that whole report we'd have had to pay for a portion of that report anything else anything yeah else? i go <clears throat> excuse me i got one thing and please don't don't read in in anything into what i'm saying um number six in here if the municipality should withdraw the project it shall reimburse the state for any costs incurred by the state in behalf of this project God forbid something happened and all of a sudden the decision came out that we're not going to move forward on this how much is 
been spent already by the state that we would have to reimburse. Well, how much have they billed us so far? I don't know off the top of my head. It's it's been a great deal that we've been billed so far. It's about a hundred thousand. At least. And you can figure that um, probably two thirds is we over that. So about two hundred thousand dollars at this point would be required to reimburse them. Reimburse. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Misty, if you would call the roll, please. Mr. Kirkovich? Aye. Mr. Shar? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Grundon? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. And our <coughs> its favorite discussion decision on the Humane Society contract. This is for uh, the, year, the calendar year 2016. This is motion 15 11 2 2. Misty, if you would be so kind. City Council motion 15-11-2-2, authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement between the City of Lake Mills and Humane Society of Jefferson County, whereas section 66.0301, Wisconsin Stats, authorizes cities and towns to enter into contracts for the receipt of or furnishing of services, and whereas the City of Lake Mills has responsibility for the provision of animal control services within the corporate limits. Be it moved by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, as follows. Section 1, that the agreement between the City of Lake Mills and the Humane Society of Jefferson County for the year 2016 is hereby amended as requested in the attached letter and is hereby approved. Section 2, that the City Manager is authorized to execute said agreement and to take such actions as necessary to implement said agreement. And do I hear a motion of adoption? That for me. <laughs> so moved. Second. 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 Okay, and on... This year we got a little bit of an increase, but that increase was due to the uh, population increase. Uh, they 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 um, they charge on is it household or per per person per person per, per person. capita. So um, the Humane Society is, as you probably already know, has built a new facility to uh, to better accommodate the uh, the animals that they pick up. And the uh, Humane Society does not normally euthanize, so the, uh, any strays that are picked up are there for the long haul or until they get adopted uh, by a new family, whichever comes first. So we'll open up the discussion with Ed. Well, I'm against their long-term care policy uh, and driving the costs up, but... Um, it's nice to see that we're only paying an increase on increase in population, not any rate this year. And, and they are trying to, apparently trying to level out the playing field between all the municipalities. So uh, that's a good thing. Mike, you got anything? Uh, no, no. Diane, Steve? I'm no. okay. No. Okay, here are no other comments. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, call a roll uh, the vote on that, please, Misty. Mr. Shar. Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Grundon? Aye. Mr. Kirkovich? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Okay, item D. <coughs> this is the discussion and decision on a Class B liquor license for Waterhouse Foods um, on 132 East Lake Street. Um, Misty, would you read that motion, please? City Council Motion 15 11 2 3 authorizing the granting of a Class B liquor license to Waterhouse Foods, Inc., 132 East Lake Street. Be it moved by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, as follows. Whereas Waterhouse Foods, Inc., 132 East Lake Street, Agent Raylan Rodeski has requested a Class B liquor license in the City of Lake Mills as set forth in the application received October 7, 2015. Whereas Waterhouse Foods, Inc., currently holds a Class B beer and Class C wine license and that the Class C wine license would need to be surrendered upon issuance of a Class B liquor license. Whereas the City Council has reviewed the proposed request and, recom and recommends approval of said request. Be it therefore moved the 17th day of November 2015 by the City of Lake Mills Council that the City Council does hereby approve the granting of a Class B liquor license to Waterhouse Foods Inc. 132 East Lake Street, Agent Raylan Rudeski, upon surrender of their Class C wine license and authorizes the council president to sign the motion. And we have a motion of adoption. So moved. And a second, please. I'll second. And, and Vicki, I have a, I just have a question. What, why? 
Are, are they, did they, does the uh, business want to sell um, liquor? Mixed drinks? Mixed drinks or what? Um, Misty's been the one who's been handling all of the whys and wherefores. Ray is here. And the applicant is oh, here. Okay. I make a motion to suspend the rules, Mr. President, to allow. Oh, we don't have to. She's a per, uh, one of the. The applicant. Yeah, we don't have to in this situation. Why not? So, Raylan Radiski, 132 East Lake Street. Um, to answer your question, we have. Uh, three uh, real reasons why we're looking to do this. Um, one is we make a lot of our own um, vanilla, we make a lot of our own um, spreads, and we make some things that we bake with, and we'd like to be able to purchase wholesale versus going to Woodman's. Um, the other reason is we'd like to enhance some of the drinks that we already do, some great coffee drinks and hot cocos and Bloody Marys for Sunday brunch. Um, we're not looking to become another bar and open till one o'clock in the morning we're looking to you know have fairly reasonable hours and just enhance some of the products we currently have and the third reason is to do some classes on how to teach people how to make their own vanilla at home and how to make eggnog and um, baileys and things like that and right now the the kind of big popular thing in Madison and Milwaukee and Chicago are craft cocktails and using local distilled spirits and there are a ton of Wisconsin distilleries out there and we have relationships with a lot of them um, and we'd love to bring those to Lake Mills and hope that um, people will come for those classes and the drinks and um, being able to have that community here we think will both be successful for us and bring people to Lake Mills. Very well, thank you. Any other questions? I have a question to Vicki. Now, for example, I remember when we were looking at, and it's not in this situation with Waterhouse Bistro, but where we had um, a new tavern license to be given out. And I don't mean the, the bartender license, I mean the actual facility license. We have only so many allocated for the population. Does this fall into that category and use up one of those? And if so, do we have that available? It's a regular liquor license, um, being that it costs $500. Um, we have one left besides this, and that's the reserve license. And if someone were to apply for that, they would have to pay the $10,000, but the city does have that reimbursement grant where they ha are eligible under certain circumstances to get $9,500 back. And that would be in addition to granting this one tonight? Right. So we so still have, oh, we'd, be, we'd be maxed out with the exception of the reserve one. Correct. Okay, thank you. And just um, <clears throat> along those lines, is the liquor license that went with CARPS, does that go to the new owner? That one's already been issued to the yeah, new Yeah, so we've all got that taken care of. Good. Okay, any other questions? And this, is all, this is all for on-site consumption, correct? That's correct. Okay. This would also allow, though, for some sale. What? For some off-sale consumption or off-site consumption as well. Um, for example, like bottles of wine, the Class C wine license that they currently hold would not allow them to sell any bottles of wine off for off-site consumption. Okay. So does this one include? And maybe Ray, you can answer the question right now. Can I get a walk into the? your establishment get a glass of wine and walk out on the street with it you can't walk out on the street on the with street it. but within yeah. your little uh, you have very in, well done but your fenced in area. area yep you could do that and Wisconsin law states that you can recork a bottle too if you don't finish it and take it home that's what our current license covers right now and and the new license would allow me to get a say the Bloody Mary and come out with it and sit <laughs> within the establishment correct as long as you were in the licensed area, licensed area which is her correct. sidewalk cafe, which she has to apply yep. for. Okay. It, you, we're looking here at saying, if I walked in and bought a bottle of wine, I could take it home. Yes. And same with the beer. No different than a tavern. No different than a tavern. It's, it's kind of limited to how much and when, but it, it, those options are available okay. to them. Okay. So if they have someone, if they have a relationship with a distillery and they got a class and someone says, I want to buy a couple of these, they could they could sell them. So sorry, I misspoke on that one. Okay. All about, please. Mr. Foster. Aye. Mrs. Fritch. Aye. Mr. Grundon. Aye. Mr. Kirkovich. Aye. Mr. Shar. Aye. Motion passed five zero. Well, the best of luck to you. 
<laughs> Hope you do well on it. Thank you for coming to answer questions. <clears throat> okay. Um, we have a discussion decision on approving the appointment of a successor agent to um, <coughs> Dalgen Corp LLC. That is also known as um, Dollar General. So if you would read motion 1511-2-4. City Council motion 15-11-2-4 approving the appointment of successor agent Dalgen Corp LLC. Be it moved by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, as follows. Whereas, on June 16, 2015, Dalgen Corp LLC was issued a Class A combination license by the Lake Mills City Council to sell beer and wine for licensing <coughs> period July 1, 2015 through June 30, 2016 at their Dollar General store, number 6861, 528 East Lake Street, Lake Mills, Wisconsin, with Troy Becker as the named agent. Whereas, Agent Troy Becker informed the City that he will no longer be the named agent for Dollar General store, number 6861. Whereas, pursuant to section 125.04 sub 6 with stats, if there is a change in agent, a corporation who holds a retail permit to sell fer fermented malt beverages and or intoxicating liquor must appoint a successor agent, pay a $10 change in agent processing fee, and a su successor agent must be approved by the licensing authority. Whereas Dollar Dalgen Corp has appointed Christine Engelhart as successor agent for the license and paid the $10 change in agent processing fee. Whereas the city council has reviewed the proposed appointment of successor agent by Dalgen Corp and recommends approval of said appointment. Be it, there, be it therefore moved the 17th day of November 2015 by the city of Lake Mills Council that the city council does hereby approve the appointment of successor agent Christine Engelhart for Dalgen Corp DBA Dollar General Store number 6861 at 528 East Lake Street and directs the city clerk to issue an amended Class A retail combination license to Del Dalgen Corp LLC listing Christine Engelhart as the new agent. And we have a motion of adoption. So, second. And we have a second. Yeah. Sorry. So and this I is just the personnel change. Right, but I would like to amend the motion that, and I'm not sure exactly how to do this, but I want it so that when we notify Christine of the change has been approved, that we also notify her of the, of the um, restrictions we have on where the liquor is placed in the building so that we don't have her saying later, well, we, I didn't know we took over, you know. So would I just make an, would I just add a sentence somewhere in here for that? We can't, we're going to, when this is directing me to issue a new license, to, with naming her as the agent, and those restrict, restrictions should be on the license. So when we, we issue that and provide it to her, yeah. it's it's within that. I mean, well, we can we can definitely do something else, but it will be on the license. It, make sure that when she gets mm -hmm. it, it's like, look here, look here, look here. Okay. I, then you don't need an amendment. Okay. No, I can definitely add highlight if you'd like, but if you want to make yes. an amendment to the motion, that's fine. But it will be on the license as well that I have okay. to reissue. Well, I, I just caution that we don't we don't put anything on this applicant that isn't put on everybody else. So um, that way, everything is above board. And uh, if it's on the license, what the conditions of the license are, that should be good enough, I would think. The license is direct where they can have it within their facility <coughs> and and so that if somebody goes and in they can see that. And everybody else has that same. Yep. Yep. Okay. It's supposed to be hung on the wall, isn't it? Yep. And it should be hung on the wall for anybody to see when they is come that, in. And that's well, any that's establishment with this license. Has been what our concern has been up to this time where they have put the liquor in places where they can't monitor it. Right. And now that we have a change in management I don't want to walk back into the store and find out it's been moved to someplace again. This will be the third time that we've had to reteach where to put the liquor, that it has to be monitored. But that should all be, as you said, right on the application, correct? Uh, on the license, license itself, yeah. the formal and it, You know, and if they violate it, it's a violation of the conditions, and, you know, we'll take appropriate action at that point. Yeah, because if they're not reading the conditions, I don't know that another letter would help. Someone's going to have to go in there and say, hey, did you read your right. license? Right, And we have a uh, chief. chief of police can do that. 
Okay, any other discussion on this? If not, go ahead and call the vote. Mrs. Fritch? No. Mr. Grundon? Aye. Mr. Krakovich? Aye. Mr. Shar? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4 1. All right. Ordinance 1156 amending the tavern operators uh, license fee and class A liquor beer license quota. This is the third reading. Sorry, Misty, but you got to do it. Ordinance 1156 amending tavern operator license fees and class A liquor beer license quotas. The City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin does ordain as follows. Section 1. Section 3-1-2-C, Classes of Licenses and Fees of the Lake Mills Municipal Code is amended as follows. Operator's license, $25 for a two-year license expiring June 30 on each odd-numbered year. Section 2, Section 3-1-2-E, Liquor License Quotas of the Lake Mills Municipal Code is amended by adding the following. Letter E, License Quotas, 1. Retail Class B liquor license as approved in section 125.51 sub 4 with stats. Two, Class A liquor licenses shall not be issued at a rate that exceeds one license for every 1,000 in population or fraction thereof as that number is provided periodically by the Wisconsin Department of Administration. Three, Class A beer licenses shall not be issued at a rate that exceeds one license for every 700 in population or fraction thereof, as that number is provided periodically by the Wisconsin Department of Administration. Four, if territory containing premises covered by a Class A liquor license or Class A beer license is annexed into the city, and if the city's quota would not otherwise allow a Class A license for the premises, the city's quota is increased to include the license of each premises in the annexed territory. Section three, this ordinance was sponsored by Council Representative Steve Kirkevich. Section four, all ordinances or parts of ordinances inconsistent with or contravening the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed. Section five, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage and publication as provided by law. I have a motion of adoption of ordinance 1156. So moved. And a second, please. Second. Discussion. Really, this thing, it, the only thing it does is clear, it is uh, increases the, um, the operator's license from 10 to $25 for a two-year license rather than $10 for a one-year license, if I remember right. Rather than a $10 for a two-year license. Oh, it was a two-year, okay. And the other thing is, is uh, a paragraph four, uh, if annexation takes place, then um, Correct. they're grandfathered in they get to bring their their license essentially with them we get to increase our quota by one to accommodate them if they were to annex in if we'd annex Watertown we'd get a gazillion wouldn't we <laughs> <laughs> okay if uh, no other discussion go ahead and call the vote mr. Grundon aye mr. Kirkovich aye mr. Shar aye mr. Foster aye mrs. Fritch aye motion passed five zero Ordinance 1157, Petition of Annexation, Simdon. This is the second reading. Go ahead and read the title. Ordinance number 1157, an ordinance annexing territory to the city of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin. And that'll move, 1157 will move to the third reading at the next meeting. Um, 1158 is a petition for annexation for PMY LLC. This is also the second reading. Ms. T.P. to read the title. Ordinance 1158, an ordinance annexing territory to the city of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin. This will move also move on to the third reading at the next meeting. And moving on to Ordinance 1159, petition for annexation, city of Lake Mills, Elm Street, right away. This is also the second meeting. Ms. T.P. if you would. Ordinance number 1159, an ordinance annexing territory to the city of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin. And Ordinance 1159 will move to the third reading at the next meeting. And Ordinance 1160, this is a stop sign at Elm and Grand Street. This is the first reading. Um, why don't you go ahead and just read that. I think this is a pretty quick one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and read that? So or sure. 
Ordinance 1160, stop sign located at Elm and Grant Street. The City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, does ordain as follows. Section 1, pursuant to Wistats Section 349.07, the City of Lake Mills is, is authorized to designate locations for the placement of stop signs. Section 2, Section 6-2-3, stop signs placement, is amended by adding the following. Elm Street at its intersection with the north curb line of Grant Street. Section 3, pursuant to the authority granted by Wistat, Section 349.08 sub 6, the City of Lake Mills is, is authorized to designate locations for the placement of yield right-of-way signs as designated intersections. Section 4, Section 6-2-4, traffic control at intersections, is amended by deleting the following location for yield right-of-way signs, and the deleted portion is Elm Street at its intersection with the north curb line of Grant Street. Section 5, this ordinance was sponsored by Council Representative Ed Grundon. Section 6, this ordinance shall take effect upon passage and publication as required by law. And before we move that to the second reading, Ed, why don't you just give us a quick Thank synopsis you, of that. Yes, I was approached by a uh, person who lives right in that intersection corner. This is uh, Elm Street, uh, tees into Grant Street. And although Grant is a dead end street, uh, it tees into, into Grant and there's a number of apartments there with the result in uh, a lot of on street parking on uh, both Elm and Grant. And uh, the person living in the apartment has witnessed over the last couple of years that he's lived there a number of near misses. He said it could be in double figures. It's, it's so high that he recalls. Um, and he almost got uh, involved twice and almost got T-boned. Uh, because people will just whiz right through the yield sign without coming to a complete stop. I went to Steve on this uh, in behalf of that constituent, and uh, Steve said he didn't have a problem with it, and we discussed the fact that with Elm going the opposite direction being built uh, to the north, that uh, it made it um, just common sense that we change the yield sign to a stop sign and the very uh, simple fix in that the post is already there, they just unbuckle the yield sign and place a stop sign in its place. So economically it's nothing um, from a, uh, preventing an accident, uh, it should have a lot to do with it. Okay, well, thank you very much for that, that insight on that. So 1160, uh, the stop sign at Elm and Grant Street, we'll move on to the second reading. Uh, and now we'll go to uh, Item nine, recommendations for future agendas. And I think, Diane, you yeah. have. I'm not sure how we want to word it on the agenda, but we were going to bring up the looking at what to do with the bike rally and things like that. We call them uh, special, the events. special events. events permits. Special no. events permits. Discussion well, of one, special yeah. events permits yep. in the city because yes. I assume it's the triathlon it's the bike events right. it's it's yeah. all of it this one was maybe worse than some others but generally it, it has to do when they get when they start getting over the six seven hundred they tend to start causing problems um, oh and it's not like we don't want it it's just that we've got to make sure we've got got it worked out so that it's workable do you know how many were registered at his, the last event? No, I do not. I heard 1,400, but I do not know that for a fact. So we get over 600, we got a problem. They had 14. Well, that's in most events. Let's let's take the Ragnar that happened last year. That one had probably 3,000 people moving through here over the course of a 24-hour period, and and there were a lot of people moving around the city during that event. Um, like I said, we, we evaluate each one of those in 2002. We had absolutely no regulation on those events. We went through with Tyranny or Brewery basically and did the first design of the special events permit and we put a lot of things in place that helped. And uh, Tyranny, we haven't really seen a lot of complaints until this year, but a bike event was a big event this year. and Or not the bike event, the running event. The bike event was good. Well, the running event went by my house, and for a half hour, it was just solid people going by. I mean, it, was that Sunday? It, it was great Saturday. for my three-year-old granddaughter. She, we had cheap entertainment watching the runners for about at least a half hour. But uh, you know, that was just the mass of people coming through the first wave, and then you know, and then 
as it started to back down on slower runners. And then, of course, it went on for a long period of time as it started to thin out. But just the, just the main group, uh, there were so many bodies a lot of people. going by. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll get that on the agenda, and we'll I, try to iron something out. I don't know that we'd be prepared at the next agenda, but or okay. well, if we get it designated as an agenda item as soon as we can get something put together. Sure, that's fine. That's satisfactory. Do you think any other items? If I can just make an announcement before sure. the next item. Um, it's that time of year I have to publish, um, it'll be in this Thursday's paper, the notice of spring election, which will take place on April 5th. There are two council person offices that will be on that ballot. Um, those are both three-year terms, District 1 with the incumbent Edward Grundin and District 2, Stephen Kirkevich. Um, I do have forms in my office for anybody that wants to pick them up. The first day to circulate the nomination papers is December 1st, and the final day for filing nomination papers is 5 p.m. on January 5th in the city clerk's office. The municipal judge is a four-year term. I do have forms for those, and they can be picked up um, at my office, otherwise at the county clerk's office, those actually get filed at the county clerk. So, and I think Vicky, isn't there a requirement now for the county for the um, for the municipal judge for qualifications? I don't think the requirement's any different. The municipal court judge has to be an attorney licensed with the state of Wisconsin. That was the first. Right. Yeah, that was last time. Was the first. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And. I was also informed that we have a vacancy on the uh, Planning Commission. So if uh, any citizens out there would like to um, apply for that, we'd certainly welcome you. And staff. Uh, Rudy, I think we should make note that w having changed the way we have our uh, council member elections run, uh, anyone in the city could take out papers because we have one from the north half of town mm -hmm. and one from the south half of town, Steve being from the south, myself being from the north, and that allows for anyone within the city to be legally able to run for one of the two positions. Yeah, that's correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, if nothing else, uh, we're going to convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.851G, conferring with legal counsel who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or likely to be involved. Um, and we will uh, reconvene after the, uh, the closed session. So let's give it about five minutes and oh, there has to be a motion second and an actual do vote. A, do we have a motion? So, so moved. moved and a second. second. <laughs> I got it. How come I keep forgetting that? <laughs> Mr. Kukovich. <laughs> I got a vote. Oh, I think you just want to get um, okay. yeah, you so we, school, we got a vote still. Rui, I still need to take a vote on the huh? I still have to oh, vote. We got a vote on that. Got a vote? We got a vote on if we can do that. All in favor say aye. Okay. Go ahead, call the vote. <laughs> aye. Bless you. Bless you. Bad. Mr. Kirkovich? Aye. Mr. Shar? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Grundin? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Thank you.